Good morning, everyone. The sound is unique. But I'm thankful to the Lord for this privilege again that I can share the Word of God to you this morning. Last Thursday, uh, we have a counseling session here together with pastor and the other pastors came from other churches. Uh, I didn't notice that pastor is not feeling well. But Friday morning, he called me, Pastor, I'm sick. Can you preach Sunday morning? So I said, yes, I will. So first Sunday of January, I was sick also, and I requested him to, uh, to preach in my, in my place, you know, in the Filipino congregations. It's very nice, no? Pastors uh, help each other. <laughs> But we are thankful to the Lord, you know, in spite of uh, snow yesterday, and now it's okay. It's a very sunny day, and we're thankful for the Lord for this day. Now, this morning, I would like to preach a very simple message, but I, I hope it will encourage everyone. So before I preach, uh, let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the privilege that we have, that we can serve you as our God, our creator. You are the source of life, the giver of life, or the sustainer of life. And Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, that through him, loving Father, we have eternal security and nothing can separate us from you. And Father, this morning as we open your word together, I pray that the Holy Spirit will guide us and give us wisdom and understanding that your word loving Father will bring glory to your name and will encourage us and strengthen us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now this morning, I would like to share a message, uh, several uh, verses. Now I will share to you from several verses. But I would like to invite you to open your Bibles in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. 1 okay. uh, We will read responsibly verses 1 to 10 first Thessalonians chapter 1 Paul and Silvanus and Timothy unto the church of the Thessalonians which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and our Father. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance, as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. So that you were an example to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. So, Paul founded the church in Thessalonica during his missionary, second missionary journey. And Paul was there for three weeks and he was able to to found the church there. He started the church. Now because of persecutions, Paul escaped to Beria. 
But when he preached the gospel in Beria, there was persecution again. So he's, he escaped to Athens. So from Athens, Paul was so anxious what will happen to the new believers in Thessalonica. So he sent back Timothy to them to do the follow-up work. And then Paul moved to Corinth. And after that, Timothy joined with him at Corinth. And then Timothy reported about the condition of the Christians in Thessalonica, that they remain steadfast in the Lord. And this is the reason Paul wrote this letter to the Thessalonian Christians, to encourage them. So they were under persecutions during the time. So Paul wrote this letter to encourage them. Now one of the things that Paul strengthened their faith, Paul mentioned about the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you waiting for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you excited when Christ comes again? So that's the message that I have this morning. So Paul wrote this letter and he mentioned three things in order to strengthen their faith. Now look at verse three. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father. So if you notice there, work of faith, labor of love, patience of hope. So these three things, faith, love, and patience is very important. And Paul mentioned this again in 1 Corinthians 13.13. 13. Love, hope, and charity, no? But the greatest of this is love, Paul said. So Paul mentioned this because this is very important for the Christians or for the believers in Thessalonica. And it is very important for us also. So Paul mentioned that. And then in verse 10, Paul encouraged them. So Paul mentioned hope in verse 3, and the hope is there in verse 10. And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus who delivered us from the wrath to come. To wait for his son from heaven. So we are waiting too today for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the second coming of Christ is the most important future event in the Lord's calendar. This is the second coming, right? The most important event in the Lord's calendar. So it is the hope of every believer in Christ. So the Bible calls it the blessed hope in Titus 2.13. It is called living hope in 1 Peter 1.3. It is called purifying hope in 1 John 3, verse 2 and 3. And it is called sure or steadfast hope in Hebrews 6.19. So the second coming of Christ will give us incentives to serve him faithfully. Because at his coming, we will give an account before him. Every one of us will give account before God. Be faithful. No, this is an encouragement. So that when he comes again, you will not be ashamed before him. First John chapter 2, verse 28. John the beloved encouraged believers in general to be faithful. Because when Christ comes again, we will not be ashamed. And you will not, lo and will not, you will not lose your reward. Are you looking for reward for that reward when Christ comes? Now today, I would like to give you five things about the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we will consult different scriptures, huh? different verses. So number one, the second coming of Christ is soon. Now the word soon means within a short period after this or that time or event. In other words, the second coming of Christ is imminent. It is likely to occur at any moment. 
So Jesus did not tell us the exact time, but there are signs before he comes. He assured us. Now what are the signs of the second coming? Now look at your Bibles in Matthew chapter 24. As we mention these different signs of the second coming of Christ, think what is happening today. Matthew chapter 24. Now look at verse 5, Matthew chapter 24, verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So that's the first sign. If you jump in chapter, uh, verse 24, it's there again. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and show how great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. There shall arise false Christs. So that is the number sign, number one sign, false Christ. Then in chapter 24, verses 6 and 7, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in various places. So the second the sign, the second uh, sign here of the second coming of Christ is wars. Now I preach a message in Filipino congregation, and I mention this. The 20th century is the bloodiest century of all centuries. Do you believe in that? Wars almost around the world. Uh, and then famines, pestilences, earthquakes. We can find that again in 24 verse 7. And then in verse 11, the same chapter, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. That's the next sign, false prophets. Then child, verse 9. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And you shall be hurt, hated of all nations for my name's sake. That is the characteristics of the people in the last days. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, Paul said, Perilous times shall come. People shall lovers of themselves. So this is the characteristics of the people. Then look at 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Look at verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. So what we call demonic activity. Now I would like to ask you, when you drive around Connecticut, how many of, of you saw a sign, what is that, a uh, psychic reading? $10 is there. The payment is $10. So. Many people are anxious for their future, so they want to go to that psychic reader, no? that person, to know their future. But there is no other uh, book that you can consult your future. It's the Word of God. The Word of God will tell us what will be our future. So demonic activity, then we have modernists, liberals, people, liberal people. That they don't believe the word of God, the Bible anymore. Then we have apostasy, turn, turning away from faith. Now, 1 Timothy 4, again, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. 
We read that a while ago, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. In the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. And that is what he called apostasy. So an apostate person, actually, he is not saved. He is just a professing Christian. He is in the midst of believers also. I hope there is no apostate in our midst this morning. <laughs> Be sure that you have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So someday in the last days, these people will come out. They will turn away. Then we have occultism. It's rampant today. It's growing around the world. We have what we call witchcraft, sorcery, black magic, Pam and card reading, false religion, horoscope, and many other things. And it is growing right now throughout the world. Those are signs of the second coming of Christ. So the second, the second coming of Christ is soon. Number two, the second coming of Christ is sure. Not only soon, but it is sure. Why? Look at John 14. So we will consult several, several verses in the Bible. John 14, very familiar verse. John 14, verse 3. John 14, verse 3. Okay? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So the second coming of Christ is sure because of the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, I will come again. So when Christ says, I will come again, we are 100% sure. Then second, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So the second coming of Christ is sure, not only the testimony of Christ, but the testimony of Paul. So Paul testified that Christ is coming soon. Then John, 1 John 3, 2. 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. Beloved, now are ye the children of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And that is the testimony of John, the beloved. Now in Second Peter chapter 3, verses 10 and 12, and that is the testimony of Peter. In Acts chapter 1, verses 10 and 11, and that is the testimony of angels. So when Christ testified that he's coming again, Paul, John, Peter, angels, then the second coming of Christ is sure. But next, the second coming of Christ is not only soon, it's not only sure, but number three, the second coming of Christ is sudden. It is sudden. Now look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verses 51 and 52. 
First Corinthians 15, 51, and 52. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all asleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Now look at verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Try, try your eyes, twink your eyes. Very fast. So that is the second coming of Christ. It's sudden, like the twinkling of an eye. Look at Matthew chapter 24. Matthew 24, verse 27. Matthew 24, 27. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Sudden, like the twinkling of an eye, and then second, like the lightning flash. Like the lightning flash. Very fast. The first Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. So the second coming of Christ is sudden because it's like a twinkling of an eye, a lightning flash. And then third, like the unexpected do you know that there is a thief but you don't know when he will strike that's the second coming of Christ we don't know when but we are sure that he is coming again so a thief will not stay but after he grabs something he just fled away Next, in Luke chapter 21, look at Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21, verses 34 and 30 to 36. Luke chapter 21, 34 to 36. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness, and cares of this life, and so that they come upon you unaware, or unawares. For like a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. So like a snare, the second coming of Christ is like a snare. It's like a trap. So it's sudden. No? So the world cannot see the rapture. Why? Because it's so sudden. But they can see the after effect of the rapture. What happened to the world when thousands and thousands of Christians will disappear? So the disappearance of thousands and thousands of people in the world, so the crashes of the land, sea, and air transportations will create chaos upon the face of this earth. So what happened when the pilot is a Christian? What happened if the driver of the bus is a Christian? What, have, what happened if the passengers of the jeepneys are Christians? 
So after the rapture, they will be missing without paying their fare <laughs> because they're missing. So the second coming of Christ is sudden. People will not know this, but after the rapture, the after effect of the rapture. So there will be chaos around the world. But praise God, we are not here anymore. The fourth. So the second coming of Christ is soon. The second coming of Christ is sure. The second coming of Christ is sudden. But the third thing, the second coming of Christ is serious. Why? It is serious, number one, to the Christians. It is serious to the carnal Christians. It is serious to the Christians who are living in sin. So that's why you have to prepare. We have to be faithful in serving the Lord while waiting for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it is serious to the Christians. Number two, it is serious to the divided family. You will be separated. Now look at Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. It is serious to the divided family. Matthew 24 verse 40. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other left. 40, 41. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, and the other left. 42. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. So it is serious for a divided family. So the unsaved members of the family, family will be left behind. You will not see him for eternity. So let's pray. If you have loved ones who are to say, pray for them. Go to them. Witness to them. Share Jesus Christ to them. Because it is serious when Christ comes again. And then it is serious to the unbelievers. Why? Because Christ, God will pour out his judgment upon this earth during tribulation period. And if they will refuse to Jesus to have received Christ as their Savior. Now, even in the tribulation period, God is giving chance to people to be saved by faith in Christ. Oh. That's why in Revelation, the book of Revelation, during tribulation time, God will send his angels preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Because after the tribulation, they will go to the kingdom age. So the gospel of the kingdom, the message for salvation is still faith in Christ. Still faith in Christ. But not only the, the angels God will use to preach the, the gospel of the kingdom, that God will convert, will raise 144,000 for the, from the 12 tribes of Israel. And this 144,000 in Revelation chapter 7, God will use them to preach, to share. Can you see the love of God to sinners? After the wrath of Israel, God is offering salvation to men. That's why in chapter 7, there are thousands and thousands of people will get, will be, will get saved during the tribulation period. Can you see the love of God giving chance to man to be saved? 
Why? In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, the word of God says, He is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God did not prepare hell for man. He prepared hell for the devil and his angels. That's why God offered salvation to men. He did not offer salvation to the angels, but to men, because man is special before God, created in the image of God. He provided salvation. So let's pray for our loved ones that they will come to Jesus. So it will be serious to the unbelievers, but it will be serious to the devil and his angels. To the devil and his angels. So Revelation, look at Revelation 19, 20. But it is a great comfort for us. Revelation chapter 19, verse 20. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrote miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worship his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Now here is the final judgment of the Antichrist and the false prophet. But if we jump to 20 verse 10, 20 verse 10, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophets are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Now sometimes there is a concept. You heard that many times, that the devil in hell will sit down on the throne with his, what is that, speeding fork in his hand, sitting on his throne and he rules the people in hell. Sometimes we hear that concept, that idea from people. But it's not. Why? Because the Bible says that the devil will be cast into the lake of fire and he will be tormented day and night. And the people who will reject Christ as the Savior, the same place. Oh, God is love. He will not send people to hell. But look at the other side of God's attribute. Not only, not only that God is love, but He is holy. He cannot afford sinners to enter heaven. That's why He provided Jesus Christ. So the second coming of Christ is serious. Be prepared. Be faithful. And the last one. The second coming of Christ is sweet. Soon, sure, sudden, serious, and sweet. Why? Why is, this, why is it that the second coming of Christ is sweet? Now, again, look at your Bibles. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. Beloved, now are we the children of God, and it doth not yet appear, yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, or we shall see him as he is. Now, the second coming of Christ is sweet, number one, because we shall see him face to face. Wow. Can you imagine that? Our Savior who died on the cross of Calvary. And we believe in Him. We have faith in Him for long years. In our life. But at the second coming, we can see Him face to face. When you face the Lord Jesus Christ, is there a smile on His face while He is looking at you? Will done, thou good and faithful servant. 
So we shall see him face to face. So that's why the second coming of Christ is sweet. It is sweet. Now the second thing here, the second coming of Christ is sweet because we shall be like him. Glorified bodies. No more death. No more sickness. My hair will come back. So there is no more what he called jewent ache. No more cane. We will not use that cane. Maybe the scar of your surgery will disappear. Everything is perfect. Can you imagine that? That's our hope in Christ. So it will encourage us to be strong and to be faithful. So we shall be like him. But the third thing, now look at 1 Thessalonians 4, 17. 1 Thessalonians 4, 17. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. Okay, allow me to read 1 Thessalonians 4, 17. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together in, with them in the clouds. To meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Very sweet. Why? Because we will be with him forever. No more separation from the presence of God. Jesus Christ said in John chapter 14. Where I am, there you may be also. When I visited my father, when he was lying on his bed, he always quoted that verse. He was so excited to be with the Lord. That's his verse. I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. What a comfort. Actually, Jesus Christ said this because he said to his disciples that, he will, he will go away on the cross to be crucified. So he, hugged, he comforted his, his disciples. I will come again and receive you unto myself. Where I am, there you may be also. So we will be with him forever. And Second Corinthians, uh, First Corinthians 5.10. See, First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. That is the next. First Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 10. Oh, sorry, 2 Corinthians, I believe. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. 2 Corinthians 5, 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Well, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. So after the rapture, the sequence of event, events, we will be facing the judgment seat of Christ. We call that Bima judgment, or Bima. The throne of rewarding. Are you expecting reward from the Lord? So there are five kinds of rewards prepared by God. No? So that's a, the second coming of Christ is sweet because we will receive our rewards. So that's why be faithful. Share the gospel to others. But next, the second coming of Christ is sweet. Why? We will be transported into a play, a perfect place. We'll be transported into a perfect place. Now look at Revelation chapter twenty uh, chapter twenty one. Revelation twenty one. Revelation chapter twenty one. Now look at verse verse four. Revelation twenty one verse four. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. 
And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. No more tears. No more death. No more sorrow. No more crying. No more pain. No more arthritis in the presence of God. Wow. Can you imagine that? Uh, our future in the presence of God. So we will be transported into a perfect place. But this, the next one, there will be a wonderful reunion with our, with our loved ones and all believers. I, my father and mother, and my one brother, or two brothers, they are in the presence of God right now. They are all believers. And I'm looking forward to see them in the presence of God. And many of you here, your loved ones that died ahead of you. That's our hope. We will see each other again. That's why a mother said to his three children one day when the mother was dying, he called his three children and said, sons, I'm dying. So he called the eldest, the oldest son. Son, do you believe Christ as your savior? He said, yes, mother, I receive him as my savior. And she said, good night. And then the second son, he called, she called the second son. Son, do you believe Christ as your savior? Yes, I believe Christ is my savior. He said, she said, good night. But the youngest one, she said, son, do you believe Christ as your savior? And then the youngest son, I'm not sure. And she said, goodbye. Goodbye. We will not see each other again. In that moment, that youngest son asked his mother, mother, why did you say to my two brothers, good night, but for me, it's goodbye. Because you don't have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You are not sure that you're saved. So during the time, the youngest son kneeled down at the bedside and accepted Jesus Christ as his Savior. He got saved. And then the mother said, before she died, good night. We will see each other again. Your loved ones who died ahead of you, if they can say that, they will say good night, not goodbye. So there will be a wonderful reunion with our loved ones and all believers. Now, what kind of reunion is that? Now, listen to this. It will be a grand reunion. Why? Because all believers, all people from the Old Testament until the second coming of Christ will be there in the presence of God. Those who believe Christ as the Savior will be there in the presence of God. It will be a grand reunion. Number two, it will be a perfect reunion. No more sin. Perfect body, perfect environment. Perfect peace, perfect joy, perfect rest. Perfect everything is perfect. So it will be a perfect reunion. Now let's say Revelation 1, 27. What does it say? Revelation 1, 27. And there shall in no way enter into it anything that defileth, neither he that worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they who are written in the Lamb's book of life. 
If you have Jesus Christ, then your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So it will be a perfect reunion. But third, it will be a joyful reunion. No more tears. No more sorrow. But number four, it will be a never-ending reunion. No more separation from our loved ones, from our brothers and sisters of the Lord, from God, from Jesus Christ himself. No more separation. So what a comfort is that? This is the truth. This is the word of God. So we must believe the word of God. A never-ending reunion. First Thessalonians 4, 17. So shall we ever be with the Lord. So what a comfort. Then we will experience perfect peace, perfect joy, and perfect rest. A residence is permanent. So in that residence, there will be perfect peace and perfect joy. So what a wonderful future we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew 24, I will close with that passage. Matthew 24, verse 42 and 46. This is an encouragement for us to be faithful while waiting for the second coming of Christ. Matthew 24, verse 42. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. So watch, that means be always on the alert. Always ready, prepared for the second coming of Christ. So we can prepare for the second coming of Christ by being faithful. Why? Because that is the only commendation that Jesus Christ will say to you. When we appear before the judgment seat of Christ, the good and faithful servant. And then if we jump to verse 46, Blessed is that servant when his Lord, when he cometh, shall find, shall find so doing. So continue serving the Lord faithfully. When he comes, we are there serving the Lord faithfully. So be faithful. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the promise that you will come again. Lord, we experience uh, difficult times in this world. But thank you, loving Father, for the hope that we have in your Son, Jesus Christ. And may this truth, loving Father, will strengthen us, will encourage us to be faithful. In his name we pray.